It says I'm live. So I'm ready to go. Hello, everybody. Today, we are talking about Oracle cards. <laughs> you are in for a treat. Oracle cards, wisdom teachings. We're going to talk about the origin of the Oracle cards, the purpose, the components, and the meaning. And really, how can you use Oracle cards in your life and tie them in with all the other wisdom teachings that I've been providing you? Because we want your life to be zestier. I'm Linda Babulik, and I'm dedicated to sharing these wisdom teachings to bring zest to today's woman, today's executive woman, today's entrepreneurial woman, today's mom. We need them all. So let's start with the cards that you're probably most familiar with. And that's our 52 cards in the playing deck. You know, the one with the bicycle on the back. They date back to the 1300s in the Far East. There are four suits. Um, there are two colors, red and black. They are court cards, which is the Jack, Queen, King. And there are numbered cards. Now, the tarot cards are derived from these. They have four suites, suits, sorry, a major and a minor arcana. Now, most tarot cards are based on an ancient deck called the Rider Waite deck. The, um, that's like the top of the line for tarot cards. And they likely have about 78 cards each, which provide detailed insights into specific situations. And regardless of the artist's interpretation of a card, such as the high priestess, the card's meaning or the empress generally stays the same from tarot deck to tarot deck. And they're used traditionally in a structured spread. So they'll be the cross spread. They'll be the before, during, and after. Today, we're talking about oracle cards. Now, my oracle cards, I use as a divination tool. And uh, it's, it's that piece that opens that connection to the divine. I've been talking about that. You connect to your higher self. You connect to the universe. And oracle cards is one more way to do that. They are not witchcraft. Witchcraft has been attached to tarot cards. And there are some aspects of that, possibly. That's not the work that I do. I don't do any of the Wiccan work. Although when you're talking about universal language and universal laws, there may be some commonalities. So they are, these oracle cards, and I'll show you some of my decks, they are a tool of self-reflection. So that heightens your intuition, your connection to yourself, and to that magical spiritual self that lives inside of you. And some people use them just for fun. I don't. I consider them sacred tools not to be messed with. And while oracle cards can offer insights similar to tarot cards, I've already told you about the major differences. Now, oracle cards have fewer rules. And the common way to use them, let me pick a deck, is to simply shuffle the cards. You can either spread the cards all out and pick one randomly from the deck, or you can have them. There are apps that you can buy that have lots of decks of cards on them. And then you can shuffle the cards on your app and you can pick a card or you can pick three cards. And often they'll give you the past, the present and the future when you have three cards, past being on the left, present being on the center, future being on the right. So you can pick them out like that, or there's what's called the jumper card. So when you shuffle your cards and a card just jumps out at you, that's called a jumper. I was just speaking to a friend of mine and she pulled a deck out, went like this, and the card that showed was the Empress. She said, would you like me to pull a card for you? Absolutely. She shuffled the deck vigorously. What do you think popped out? Of course, it was the Empress. And the Empress is about leadership and stepping into your power. And I had asked a question. Different ways of using the cards. So you can ask a question. 
Some decks, this particular deck has yes, a yes card and a no card. So you can get a yes or no answers. Most decks don't have that. You need to ask another question. Like I stepped into my question for the Empress was, who do I have to be to accomplish what I'm looking to accomplish? And the Empress said, step more into your power. Stand your power. Do what is in your heart. So let's go through, first of all, um, how to buy. How are you going to buy your deck if you don't have any decks? And if you already have decks, you may want to apply some of this to the decks you already have. So buy, trust your intuition. If you see a deck like this, this is Rebecca Campbell. Um, Work Your Light Oracle Cards. She also wrote a book of the same title or Light is the New Black, I think was the name of her book. And that was an excellent one. Interesting, when I pulled out my box of cards, I have this little medallion that says, hang on to your dreams. Interesting, must have been in a deck of cards. Now, Rebecca Campbell has another deck called the Starseed Oracle. Great packaging, because you can pull the card out and you can actually rest it in the little box here so that you have your card right in front of you. A beautiful packaging. So it's all of those aesthetics that will appeal to you are how does it feel? How does it look? Does it just make your heart sing? And you say, I've had decks that just say like this, just said, take me home, Linda, take me home. And I use this deck quite a bit. One of the first decks I started with was the Goddess Guidance Oracle Cards by Doreen Virtue. That's a beautiful deck also. The um, one of my, let me go here. Here's another deck by Doreen Virtue called Saints and Angels. But you need to trust what you're looking for. So if you're into Saints and Angels, then go ahead, get the Saints and Angels cards. Um, there's another deck that I haven't had the opportunity to use much, uh, Moonology. That's one that really interested me. And I thought, oh, I want to get into that. Um, some of my first decks were the Power Deck by Lynn V. Andrews. It's actually her book, The Medicine Woman, that got me on a lot of the path that I'm on. I started with that and I thought that's got to be fiction. And it turns out it wasn't fiction. And the things she talked about in that book, I have now gone on those vision quests. I've done those things. So it's pretty fun. Another deck, and they come in different sizes, different styles, is this medicine card. So you go like this. Sorry, that's probably just a spammy number because I don't recognize it. So medicine cards. And they've got the animal totems in them. So that may be interest of you. Um, the deck that I also love is the Sacred Rebels deck. And they have different numbers of cards. This one has 45 cards and a 184 page guidebook that comes with it. And it's by Autumn Sky Morrison. Beautiful illustrations, like look at the artwork. You have to give the author and the artist some credit. This one is by Megan Watterson. She wrote a wonderful book about Mary Magdalene. And that's what attracted me to look her up and to find her cards, the divine feminine. And more and more, the divine feminine is stepping up to build a better world. The deck that I have that's closest to tarot is very, very hard to get. It's the Zoltan Tarot. And that one, the way we do our Book of Life reading, is only by using the major arcana in it. So only the top cards, not the numbered cards at all. That's for a Book of Life reading. I also have this lovely Akashic Tarot guidebook, which is done by sisters. 
Sharon and Klager and Sandra and Taylor. They are sisters. And I use these to give you an Akashic record reading. Your Akashic records are your life records, your book of life. Remember, we talked about karma and dharma. These books will enlighten that for you. Really, really good at finding uh, if you have questions, if you have some dilemmas in your life and you're looking for answers, they are so inspirational. To have an Akashic reading is really powerful. And I've done several. Uh, I do Akashic tarot for others and I do them for myself every couple of months. And it just, it's like it lays out my path in front of me. And it's always fun to go back and say, what was I going to do? And to see how powerful the divination is. Now, a couple of more decks I want to share with you are the ones by Car uh, Colette Baron reed Now, Colette Baron reed is a Canadian which is awesome. So Wisdom of the Oracle is one of my favorite decks. And what I do in some of my decks is I um, bless and awaken them. I bless and awaken the deck. I don't know if I've mentioned this already. So how to buy. You want to, I did. Trust your intuition, connect with the artwork, and buy them on sale. Right now, Hay House has a big sale on. Theirs are not always the best price. Amazon's not always the best price, but you can buy them on sale. And I just put a deck in my, because uh, my friend suggested it. Um, I just put a deck in my shopping cart at Hay House. And they're regular $20. I think I'm getting it for 10. And in the box, I put stones. Now we're going to be talking about stones, the rose quartz to open your heart and the citrine. So I put those in the bottom of the box. The box doesn't close as well then, but that doesn't bother me. Or you can say a little prayer with your intent and put it inside the box. And what I also do is you want to read the booklet for each new deck that you get read the booklet. The author has written, what are their intentions? What was their idea behind writing this one? This is another deck by Colette Baron Reed and the seven Oracle of the seven energies. And the Oracle of the seven energies is aligned with the seven chakras. That's right. So that's what she does. And the colors go in there. You know, she's got the seven energies, red, orange, yellow. You've got it by now. Green, sky blue, purple. And she uses the top chakra as gold and white. So really great. She gives you an instruction booklet on how to work with the seven oracles. And there are other decks that... Oh, and when I shuffled this morning, because I do this every day as part of my meditation, two cards jumped out. I had two jumpers. And then there are other decks. This one I won, Awaken Your Inner Wisdom. And that's by Kim Chesney. I'll show you one of her cards. They're quite unusual. See? Artwork. And you decide what you want them to mean. It's really quite beautiful and creative. Kim has done a great job on that. This one I was given at a retreat I went to called Seeds of Intention Card. And I don't even know who put that out. There's a website, but I don't think it works anymore. And then there were three uh, sets of cards done by sisters called... Um, energy essentials, energy practices, and energy lifestyles. And they're fun cards. So not, you know, people are doing cards because it's an easy, easy way for you to understand. And yes, I do do readings. I'm particularly fond of using the Akashic Tarot to do readings. And we have a moment. So I thought we would do a little um, reading on sacred reverence. And that's one of the cards that fell out today. I had two fall out. Oh, and the other thing I do is I put a little post-it note at the back of the cards and I write the date 
and the page number or the number of the card so that I can see the patterns in there. It's like, oh, I got 47 on in November today. And then I got that on the 18th of August because I switched my decks around. So sometimes I use this, sometimes I use another one. Um, and this one said, today stand with open arms, knowing that you are stepping into beauty, into experiences that are potent and transformative. You are walking past the line that you and others drew long ago, leaping over what was and toward what will be. You are more than you were. Now, what is it that you want? The treasure is yours. You just need to believe it. And I think that's a fine tone to leave you with today. If you have any questions, you know I'm easy to find. And check out my other videos where I shared about chakras, dressing for blessing, creating sacred space. And you want to tie these together. So create your sacred space, get your cards, smudge them, create your sacred space before you even start reading the book. And then read the book while you're sitting in sacred space. The energy will be very, very different for that when you're in sacred space. Then you can do your card reading. You could pull one, you could pull three, you could follow some of the uh, layouts that they have inside the book. Trust the people that have designed these books that it's for your greater good. Set an intent. What do I want out of this reading? Do I want to know where to guide myself? Do I need to know how to change myself? And there's different kinds of readings for different things. And I'm packing in as much as I can in these short videos. And we're going to continue talking about, uh, like, I'm serious. I have a box of them. That's not even all of them. Let me see. What is next? Yeah, on our agenda, we're going to be also talking about tying in with the uh, chakras oils and stones and then we're going to start talking about the seven secrets of women with zest and that's from my book and we're going to be talking about the goddess all these things coming up real soon for you i love you i am so grateful you're with me if you want me to do a reading if you want to just have a chat let me know and please post a picture of the oracle cards if you already have a deck Drop a picture in there. Show me what you have or show me what you're buying. I'm really interested in all the different decks because now there are hundreds of them. So thank you so much for being with me today. I'm going to just do this. Thank you so much. And I'll see you again real soon.